TTC is at the Canadian Grand Prix. We find ourselves fortunate enough to be here for the Formula One weekend, and for Tool Guys, almost as interesting as the Grand Prix itself is free practice, qualifying, and paddock passes where you see some, in my opinion, surprising tools and tool brands up and down pit lane. Now you need a special vest to really get up in these guys' business and record video or anything like that, but I'm going to try to go over some of the types of tools you might see being used in the paddock and during pit stops with clips on screen that should show you some of that. Let's start with drivers and not the ones in the cars. Installation drivers and a few impact drivers at times are the name of the game here. You'll see models like this Bosch here used to install lots of small fasteners. I've seen multiple teams use small 12 volt Bosch tools like this. Then for disassembly and quick reassembly, you'll see some impact drivers come out sometimes, but more often than not, more installation drivers like this DeWalt DCD703 here with the McLaren team as they're busy breaking my heart each weekend trying to put a car back together. And that would be all DeWalt in the McLaren garage as they are sponsored for the last couple years by DeWalt in a big way. You'd be hard pressed to find some other power tool brand around that car now. McLaren edition DeWalt tools even dropped recently. Let us know if you want to see those tested, even though it's probably just a new clamshell body, it would give me a reason to buy them. But interestingly, unlike the latest models like the DCF850 and PowerStack batteries, you mainly see 12 volt tools and two amp hour cylindrical cell batteries being used here, time tested and lightweight probably equals speed and efficiency. Onto the biggest representation of cordless tools in the paddock, leaf blowers or well cordless coolers in this case for the engine, side pods which is where the radiators are, and front and rear brakes. Up and down the paddock you're going to see a main constant outside a few rebels which we'll cover too and that's Makita. Makita here, Makita there. They're always unbranded because they don't sponsor any team or blacked out or even given a sweet paint job like in Ferrari's case. But many teams like that Ferrari, Mercedes, Aston Martin, Red Bull, Alfa Romeo, well, most of them use Makita. Alfa even uses their smaller XBU-05Z blower. The rest mainly use the 18x2 Makita blower XBU-02Z for the large side pod intakes and the single battery LXT XBU-03Z we've tested before for the front and rear brakes. Here's Ferrari with six blowers going all at once. During longer downtimes, Ferrari and many others use these custom blowers with large battery packs, slower speed, quieter, longer runtime. I assume. Those LXT 5 to 6 amp hour batteries have their limitations. But not for McLaren with their DeWalt's though. This past season they upgraded to 15 amp hour flexible packs. These puppies are around 350 bucks a piece, but offer a lot longer runtime without worrying about recharging between Q1 and Q2 sessions. And they do use them on the DCB L772X1 flex volt blower with an effective 5 amp hours at 60 volt max, which we've also tested so we can show you how these different models stack up. But even more blowers to show you, including a lot of custom ones used by many teams. Alpine seems to only use team-made cordless coolers for their engines. And here's the Haas using a custom cordless one on one side and a Makita 18x2 supplementing here on the other side. And the last holdout, as far as I can tell, I'm sure I've missed some, is Alpha Tauri, who use Ego, mainly for the brakes, custom like Alpine ones for the side pods, but that high Ego airspeed for the brakes represents the third major brand in blowers and a lot more amp hours on tap using those batteries. Here's a quick sort of head-to-head -head drag race between the three brands of blowers that we've bought here. The Makita 18 volt, DeWalt 56 slash 60 volt, and Ego. The Makita clocks in with 97 miles per hour of airspeed with an air volume going through those brakes that's 444 CFM. The DeWalt steps things up with any battery to 111 miles per hour and 632 CFM. They're only advertising 600. That's a lot of air, but these cars still drive well above that speed. So last up is the Ego, who's usually pretty spot on with their numbers. I can't tell if it's really a 5302 or 7654 model, but that would be tops overall 108 to 128 miles per hour, considering they're not holding the turbo button down the whole time and 520 to 750 CFM. But while you get a lot of performance and amp hours from an Ego, I imagine most teams are using Makita because you can get replacement tools and batteries in most of the countries they travel to, which with custom made carbon fiber and plastic attachments for these blowers, that's probably key to a smooth weekend. 
Okay, on to the most surprising tool I've been seeing, and that's wheel guns. Everyone's familiar with the air guns teams use to zip wheels on and off during record-setting pit stops. That'd be a carbon fiber Paoli model that's electronically controlled with green lights that light up when tight. These type of guns run at 450 PSI off of a nitrogen tank and spin up near 16,000 RPM. They're good for a max of 3,000 to 3,500 foot-pounds of torque, but in this case are used for a fraction of a second up to four five, 600 foot pounds on the center wheel nut. Something I only noticed in the past year is you're starting to see more and more Milwaukee one inch pistol impacts 2867. The first time now using cordless impacts in F1. Now Grand Prix pit stops are still the old Paoli pit guns, but in free practice qualifying, you're starting to see more and more of these guys. And maybe it's coincidence, but they only started popping up on the radar the season after Valtteri Bottas's famous multiple day Mercedes pit stop when the wheel nut wouldn't come off. It was cross threaded and just too tight and the wheel nut was basically machine smooth from the titanium wheel gun socket trying to remove it. Our 2867 Milwaukee here on the other hand has one key and you can program it in on the app how much juice you want from this thing when you pull the trigger with the through hole in the anvil to retain the specialized F1 socket. And while we found this model in particular to not be jaw dropping in reverse, it was able to in forward put out as much as 1,020 foot pounds, more than enough for a center nut. And that's what you'll see these used for installing wheels, maybe not lightning fast, but quickly without as much risk of over tightening. Prior to this, and they still do this sometimes, they'd use a Paoli gun to install a wheel in the garage by blipping the throttle two or three times. But with over 3,000 foot pounds on tap, you can understand why something like this can happen and just not know it. So the Milwaukee takes some of that guesswork out. Pretty cool. And that's not the only Milwaukee tools I saw used. You can also spy teams like Red Bull using M12 die grinders to cut, repair, and shape carbon fiber bits. I also saw their straight M12 die grinder used with a carbide burr. Okay, rounding this out with some hand tools and the last few air tools. When it comes to hand tools, I've only seen Metatoyo for measurements and Beta, Snap-on, and Facome for hand tools. That's about it. Every brand I've been able to spy is one of those three brands, maybe some Baco in there as well, actually. Most ratchets being Snap-on. And they have these trick specialized cordless drivers that adjust the front wing during race pit stops that have these like stepper motors inside that you can program for precisely how many half turns you want it to quickly do. Each click is half a degree of wing angle. Pretty sweet. And lastly, air tools are still not uncommon in the paddock. Pit guns don't run off the shared compressor air system as they run at 400 plus PSI, but you'll still see your fair share of blow guns and these Venturi Effect driver cooler guns. These are also used by painters and paint booths. Drivers also have these cooled air tubes coming from the ceiling, but this is a shared system for all the garages and the air doesn't stay frosty forever. So you see teams using these as well. Well, that was a lot more talking than I had planned. If you're an F1 fan, hope you enjoyed qualifying today and the race tomorrow. If you're a tool fan, hope you enjoyed seeing some cool tool tidbits that I found interesting as well. Back to your regularly scheduled programming and thanks for watching.